Hello operators, I'm Machete from r6siegecenter.com, bringing you another guide for R6 operator. This video's topic will be Vigil. We will learn how to play him effectively in 2023. To do so, we will need to understand the following aspects. Vigil's utility and how to use it wisely, interactions with other operators in the game, the playstyle of Vigil, difficulty of using him right. And lastly, what is the best loadout to use? If you are someone who prefers reading, no need to worry. I've got a written guide ready for you on my website. Just check the link in the video's description. And hey, if you are stuck with your Rainbow Six Siege rank, I've got something perfect for you. Check out our premium ebook available exclusively on our website. We are so confident in effectiveness of our ebook that we are offering a 14 days money back guarantee. If our guide doesn't help you rise up in the ranks, we will give you money back. Head to the link in the comment section to find out more. I would also appreciate if you guys could drop a like. It takes nothing from you but helps significantly with how videos perform on the platform. And for more videos about Rainbow Six Siege, hit that subscribe button. Ok, now let's dive into the utility of Vigil and how to use it effectively. Vigil wields the ERC-7, a gadget that makes him invisible to enemy cameras and drones. This means they cannot spot him on their screen. Keep in mind, moving around can still reveal your presence through sound. The ERC-7 lasts for 12 seconds and takes 6 seconds to fully recharge from zero. You can toggle it on and off like Kavera and Nock. Just ensure that you have at least 20% of charge left. When you activate it, you might get a notification about nearby drones being deceived by your gadget. This means you should go and find those drones because they are within 12 meters. Here's the twist. Unlike before, Vigil's gadget stays active even when he shoots or performs other actions. But these actions create a glitch on enemy screens, exposing your location. Running also triggers this glitch effect. So, while you don't have to manually reactivate your gadget, remember that some actions and running can give away your position. With the ERC-7 active, cameras and drones close to you within 12 meters show interference revealing your proximity to enemies through visual and sound disturbances. The closer you are, the stronger the effect. Now, you might wonder about the main purpose of Vigil's gadget and when to use it. The primary advantage of the ERC-7 is countering attackers' intel about Vigil's precise location. This forces attackers to waste time hunting him down or risking surprise encounters later on during the round. Despite run and gun meta in the game, droning remains crucial, especially in higher ranks where teamwork is more common. When played strategically, Vigil offers three main benefits to his team. First we have time wasting. If attackers target roamers before pushing the side, Vigil's ERC-7 lets him become elusive. Constantly shifting positions and destroying drones keeps attackers guessing. Furthermore, we have ambushes. Cloaking device helps Vigil to set up ambushes. At the early stages of the round, he can for instance spawn pick or deny entrance to the building. But he can also use this later on during the round to his advantage. And lastly, we have the intimidation factor. Vigil can scare off less confident attackers. By stripping intel, he can unsettle attackers' confidence in gunplay and tactics. And now, to answer a question on potentially everyone's mind. When do you activate the ERC-7? We have four main moments in the round to do so. First is the entry denial. When spawn picking or blocking building access, activate your cloaking device for a few seconds into the action phase. This is because more cautious attackers may actually try to drone out their entry point before pushing in. Secondly, when you expect a push, if you sense attackers may be about to approach you, turn on the gadget. Signs include barricades being shot, hearing footsteps and drone scouting. Remember. Attackers might still see you via their pre-placed drones even if you don't see the drones themselves. So turning on cloak adds another layer of safety. First situation to use your gadget is when you are rotating. As a roamer, you should be on the move frequently. ERC-7 prevents intel about your new direction, adding element of uncertainty. And lastly, we have flanks. For a flank, activate the cloak to hide your approach from drones, but remember that Players who are watching drones can still hear you, so remain cautious. 
And that sums up the Vigil's gadget usage. Hopefully, these insights enhance your performance. Next, we will delve into Vigil's interactions with other operators in Rainbow Six Siege. When it comes to interactions, we have not much to talk about in terms of synergies. See, Vigil is not particularly synergistic with any other defenders. But he can greatly benefit from anchors providing him with intel from cameras. This is especially common early during the round when the action phase begins. Anchors are usually not particularly busy in these early seconds of the round and therefore can assist their roamers with information about enemies' movement and approach. Now, let's move on to who is actually countered by Vigil. See, he is a specific counter to only two attackers. First, we have Lion's EED scanner, which is unable to ping Vigil when he has his ERC-7 active. But bear in mind that if your cloaking system is inactive, then Vigil gets pinged while moving just like everyone else. Furthermore, you can use ERC-7 to avoid pings from Grimm's bees. Besides these two specific interactions, Vigil counters intel from any drone and camera devices. As such, Vigil deceives feed from default drones as well as specialized ones from Flores, Twitch and Brava. On top of that we have Zero's cameras that can see him as long as ERC is active. Plus, any hacked surveillance devices by Dokabi are also vulnerable to his cloaking device. Therefore, Vigil's ability to counter attackers depends heavily on their reliance on surveillance devices. Ok, lastly, let's discuss counters to Vigil. First, we have Jackal who can sniff our footsteps. Unlike Caveira, Vigil's footsteps are still visible to Jackal even when moving with ERC active. Second counter to Vigil is IQ. IQ can see Vigil on her electronic scanner when he is within range and has his cloaking device active. This interaction works similar to that with Pulse. There are also interactions with Thatcher and Twitch disabling ERC7 with their utility. But to be honest, those interactions are so extremely rare. In all these years of playing this game, I have not seen that once impacting the round. So that's about it when it comes to interactions. Now let's discuss the playstyle of Vigil during Rainbow Six Siege match. Vigil together with Caveira is the operator who I categorize as a dedicated roamer in Rainbow Six Siege. Technically, he could stay on site, but doing so is very counterproductive. If you want to stay on the objective, you have tons of much, much better options available at your disposal. Vigil shines as a roamer thanks to three main factors. First, we have his operator specification of being free speed and one armor character. High mobility and low armor are perfect for pesky roamers who move faster and do so more quietly than their heavier bodies. Furthermore, Vigil has a loadout kit designed for roamer. He has two automatic weapons both as primary and secondary gun, but without access to magnifying scopes. Vigil also has impact grenades to create new avenues or to set up ambushes. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly in this subject, we have Vigil's utility. ERC7 is perfect for constant movement keeping enemies guessing and uneased while wasting their time. For those of you unfamiliar with the term of roaming, here is a short explanation. Roaming means leaving the objective site as a defender to roam the map, interrupt and flank the attacking team. Roamers usually split into two types, disruptive and sneaky ones. Disruptive roaming involves denying the ability to enter the building for attackers and continuously harassing attackers to shift their attention from the objective to you. On the other hand, we have sneaky defenders who rely more on concealing their location and even their presence to flank unsuspecting attackers during a later stage of the round, when it hurts the most. Vigil can fulfill both roaming types, but is way more commonly used for disruptive roaming, while Caveira tends to be the sneaky one. Therefore, when playing Vigil, you want to be a pain in the attacker's ass as much as possible. You also want to avoid dying too early and your top priority should be to waste round time. Lastly, if you see attackers pushing onto objective decisively early on, don't wait too long with your flank. Ending up in constant clutch situations with multiple enemies left is a clear sign that you are not doing your job as a disruptive roamer.
In my personal ranking, Vigil is in medium range of difficulty. It is easier to mess up roaming than to be a useless anchor on the side in Rainbow Six Siege. Therefore, roaming is a generally harder role to fulfill properly, and this naturally raises our rating of the operator's difficulty by a notch. From available defenders specialized in roaming, Vigil is actually quite easy to pick up and utilize in basic ways. After all, his utility is very easy mechanically. However, mastering Vigil does require extensive experience and map knowledge. Knowing when to activate ERC depends on good game sense and timing flanks properly, which is not something that new players will be usually quite good at. On top of that, effective roaming requires map knowledge and being comfortable with moving around the map and creating new avenues. And because of all of that, Vigil lands in that medium difficulty range spot. He has relatively low skill floor, yet high skill ceiling. Lastly, let's find the best loadout for Vigil and break it down. On the screen, right now, you can see the loadout I suggest you use when playing Vigil. It's K1A plus C75 and impact grenades. Here is why. First up are primary weapons. Let's all agree first that Boss G is a meme gun. Unless you are messing around, you should always pick K1A over it. Boss G has extremely high damage per bullet, sure, but the trade-off is insane. It only has two bullets available before reload is necessary. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the setup of K1A. This gun is not the laser beam it used to be. Right now, K1A kicks to the right and has a higher vertical climb. Personally, the horizontal kick bothers me more than the vertical one, and so I prefer to use compensator with this weapon. In the past, I used to run K1A with angled grip, but since the recoil got bigger and angled grip was nerfed, I always run vertical grip whenever possible. And this gun is not an exception here. And since Vigil has no access to magnifying scopes, I suggest you pick a 1.0 sight that fits you the most. For me, it's either Hollow A, Hollow B, and Reflex A. Now let's talk about secondaries, which are significantly more debatable topic than primary weapon choices. Vigil is in a unique position with two automatic secondaries available for his loadout. I actually think he is the only operator with such option, or do I miss somebody? Both C75 and SMG12 have their trade-offs. The choice between weapons comes down to basically this. Are you okay to bear with shitty field of view or crazy recoil? The advantage of SMG12 is having an access to usual 1.0 sight options, while C75 can be used only with default iron sight which is… well, it's terrible. When in ADS, C75 has a minimal field of view and it may be hard for you to see what are you actually shooting at. However, stable recoil of C75 makes it still a better option than currently SMG12 is. Unfortunately, SMG12 has insane recoil. From the attachment perspective, C75 Auto has some of the most limited options from all guns available in the game. You can only attach a suppressor. Yeah, that is basically all you can do. And since suppressor no longer lowers damage per bullet, there is no reason not to equip it. Lastly, impact grenades are the universal gadget to go with Vigil. Impacts will help you open new avenues, angles and will provide Vigil with an option for creating an emergency escape route when pinched. The bulletproof camera can have its use, but I do not recommend equipping it with Vigil unless necessary due to specific tactics. After all, mobility is key while roaming and impacts are your only way to create holes. So that's my guide on how to play Vigil in 2023. I think Vigil is a good operator, but his utility strength depends on how intel heavy enemies are. And in the current meta of run and gun, I find value of Vigil a bit like Luster, sharing fate similar to that of IQ. Also, there is the recent addition of Solis, whose utility has broader application than ERC7. What do you think about Vigil's current state in 2023? Is he your favorite roamer or do you prefer other operators? I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then I would appreciate a like, which helps with video's performance. And if you want to see more of Rainbow Six Siege videos, then hit that subscribe button to get notified about my latest uploads. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.